follows now. But we start at Blundell Park, Grimsby Town looking to bounce back from midweek defeat by Norwich against the Queen's Park Rangers side under new management. Your commentator, John Helm. Queen's Park Rangers yet to win a game uh, under Stuart Houston in the league. And they've slipped into the bottom half of the table. Grimsby, of course, in the bottom three at the moment, so they're badly in need of a win today. This would be a very good game for the spectators. It's not been the brightest of starts, but here goes Widrington. And Childs was at full stretch, but managed to find Mendonca. Who holds it up well under Barker's challenge. But Dermot's made a run on the outside for Childs. Doesn't use him, but it's nicked in here for Clive Mendonca. And Mendonca scores for Grimsby. The Queen's Park Rangers defence asleep. That's the only word for it, as Mendonca raced on to the end of that little flick ball. Gary Childs had threaded it through, and Jürgen Sommer seemed in no man's land. The defence completely asleep, and it's a goal for Clive Mendonca. Well, that should sting Queen's Park Rangers. And they're on the charge again, and Mendonca's up there too, and he might get another one. The goalkeeper came. I don't think there was anything malicious in that. I think uh, Mendonca was probably balked, but not intentionally, and that's where Mr Allison has to interpret the rule. Stuart Houston very unhappy, I would imagine, with the events of the first 21 minutes. His side has been torn apart on numerous occasions. Nicely taken down by Forrester, Grimsby looking very lively at the moment, on goes Gary Child, it comes back to him, he might get a second, and it comes away off Rufus Previtt, and over the top of the Queen's Park Rangers crossbar, but that Rangers defence at the moment is all over the place. Dickio's not had much service as yet. this time for Mendonca and again he's confused that back line and he rolls the ball invitingly to Forrester now it's swept wider for Gary Childs a second Grimsby goal would cause Rangers immense problems Forrester's in there for it, Childs there again Mendonca is just over the top of him down on the Grimsby bench Brian Laws and Kenny Swain much happier than they were during the midweek defeat by Norwich although they said that the team actually played well in spells of that match too well saved by uh, cameraman acting as uh, doubling up as a goalkeeper now Childs with the cross there's the flick through and it's Dikio and they are at full stretch at the back again Rangers it's hit here, oh it's a fabulous goal, Tommy Widrington. His first for Grimsby Town and what a cracker. The ball came to him at a lovely height but Tommy Widrington who last scored for Southampton against Chelsea in the Premier League back in February has smacked an absolute beauty past Jürgen Sommer into the top of the QPR goal and it's Grimsby 2, Queen's Park Rangers 0 John McDermott, the ever dependable right back he's been here some time now the senior professional at Grimsby over 350 appearances for the club and there's his throw in and there's Steve Livingston Mendonca down to Forrester Rather took the momentum out of the move rather than adding to it. And then it's Mendonca, and this is really excellent play. And Sommer beats it out. Shakespeare's there, and it would have been goal number three, but for Carl Reddy. Well, Tony Gallimore had got forward in support again there, and the Queen's Park Rangers defence has looked very brittle this afternoon. And Craig Shakespeare almost scored for the second Saturday running. And there's been a reorganisation of the Queen's Park Rangers back line with Reddy moving into the middle and Plummer to right back. And here is Mendonca, gets it through for Forrester, could be number three. Should have been, but Jürgen Sommer made the stop. 
and Shakespeare was on the left to Forrester and wondering now why he never got the pass could have been and should have been 3-0 there QPR suddenly coming alive a little they've had a mixed start to life in the Nationwide League and it's found a way through here for Graham and it just needed a touch from him and QPR were back in the match Mark Graham stealing in there behind Gallimore just needed to touch that one as it floated across towards him but Piercy effected the stop again Sinclair can't get past his marker Shakespeare that time so it's Mendonca good tackle but McDonald and then it's given away and Forrester can feed it on and Mendonca could wrap it up here for Grimsby the keeper somewhere in front of him the challenge is made there comes Forrester he can't finish it either and if Grimsby don't win today, they'll look back on that as a crucial moment. Forrester sent Mendonca on his way, the chase was always on, and Mendonca probably took just a fraction too long. Sommer presented himself, he's big, and he beat it out, and Grimsby couldn't finish the job. Widrington, Mendonca, Southall wide, only Woods in the middle. Widrington's trying to get up there as well, and Southall will knock it across, and here's Woods, and Sommer makes the save, it should have been 3-0 again. It was a straightforward header for Neil Woods, excellent cross in from Nicky Southall, Woods met it on the full, and Sommer a reactionary save. And the referee blows the final whistle, three valuable points for Grimsby Town, QPR competed better in the second half, but the strikes from Clive Mendonca and Tommy Widrington good enough to win the day for Grimsby Grimsby Town 2 QPR nil. Brian a vital victory and well achieved well it was well achieved um, I thought we went out and set a stall out in the first half and you know realistically we could have been 3 or 4 in the first half uh, we played our football uh, we took the game to QPR and I think they, you know, we had them on the rack for the first 45 minutes in fact I didn't want it to end I thought we uh, were totally dominating that, that area and we only had little flashes of, uh, of getting through our back four who I thought uh, defended very well today. We're in a competitive industry and we, you, know, you have to come up and compete and first half was disappointing from that point of view. Second half I thought we, we went about the job a lot better and we gave them a few problems but in saying that we, we might have got a goal or two back but my goalkeepers made some good saves as well at the other end. Well, it's all nice and quiet in the dugout at the moment, but there's been plenty of ranting and raving from the, from the touchlines throughout the course of the season. Ron Atkinson, Peter Reid, Mark McGee, Colin Todd, they've all been in a spot of bother. And Chris Kamara of Bradford City had an altercation with a referee during the week. This is what he thought about it. Thank you.